Hello and welcome to Paris Set Me Free, creative video tutorials. And uh, here we see the Balls Woman, or the, uh, the Globes Woman, I guess we should say. Or, to be honest, just some woman walking past some globes. These globes are rather amazing. They're in the Palais Royal in Paris, just opposite the Louvre. And there's, there's these two sets of them you can see here and here. And what I've done is to get really up close to one set of them to put the other one into perspective. So I've almost filled the bottom half of the shot with these and their cousins over there, which are exactly the same size as these, um, just take up a tiny part of the frame. So it's a, it's a typical device for um, giving you a, a sense of perspective, a sense of distance. The eye supposes, because they can see that there's a woman there, so she's coming towards us, so they know about, the, the eyes know about perspective. So they assume that these are the same size, but it's a, a pleasing um, phenomenon to to see these taking up all of the, the shot. It's the sort of thing our eyes might actually see. If we were very close to them, our eyes, our eyes would be, the bottom, I don't know, half of our eyes would be taken up with these things, but we just don't realize it because we don't look that way. And when we see it, uh, when, when we give our eyes limits, i.e. the limits of the shot here, uh, we can, we can emphasize something that we see normally but don't realize and it amuses us for some reason because we're not used to it. Uh, our eyes would actually not have these these lines here, they would see the rest of the balls, the rest of the courtyard, uh, all the other tourists and so on. So by giving us ourselves these these boundaries, the edges of the shot, we can play with things which which exist anyway, which we all see, but we can force ourselves to see them in a, in a new way and if you realize that you can do that, then you can get lots of interesting effects. So um, <clears throat> here was the woman, and the woman makes the shot really, otherwise it would be quite boring, apart from this, this pleasant effect I've just talked about. Uh, you needed someone there to give a sense of perspective, to give a sense of movement, and uh, a bit of humanity really. She's in black, which is good, because apart from these black, darker bits in between the panel, in between the columns, uh, everything else is dark, everything else is light, and so she's a pleasing little black person walking towards us, nicely placed in the top left hand side of the frame, which is good, um, and echoes these uh, columns as well. The the bits in between the columns are also uh, tallish and dark, which is um, is a good echo. Now here's the final version. As you can see I've toughened things up a bit, made it a bit more of a an eye, eye hitting, hard hitting shot, uh, which, which is what it needed. It was a little bit too pale, especially when you've got things like chrome. These chrome balls are, well, if you, chrome, often gives you the feeling that um, airbrush artists love chrome. When they're painting, they do some incredibly more lifelike than than real life paintings um, by imitating chrome and effectively chrome is a 100% reflective surface as are these. These are chrome or some other purely uh, uh, mirror, mirrored balls and in fact you can't actually see them so you're not looking at the thing, it's impossible, you're looking at the reflections and they're only made of reflections. So, I mean, what airbrush artists do to try and draw something which is 100% reflection and therefore you could say invisible, well, they draw the reflections and you can see, if you look at any airbrush painting of a, a car, a classic American 50s car or something with enormous chrome bumpers, you'll see what they've done is, in the bumpers they've done things like this. This is actually the top of the building and this is the sky, and this is the top of the other building, curved of course, with varying shades of grey going down until the point where it actually starts reflecting the other reflecting ball next to it. So <laughs> if, they, if they were really being precise, the ball that they painted in the reflecting ball would actually be, again, reflections of some other point of view of the skyline.
so it all gets very uh, very complicated but um, effectively that's what it is and it's weird we don't expect to see these things that's why they intrigue us so much you don't expect to see uh, pure purely round and purely reflecting balls in nature so it, it's, uh, it pleases us it's intriguing um, the hardening up effect that I used has has made these really really purely white um, and very hard hitting to the eye and has made the courtyard much more human much more you can see there's rain there there's the lines and the irregularity of the the color and so on I had a few of this uh, woman to choose from as usual I took more than one shot and as very often happens this was the first shot I took and it was the one that I used because often if you've got your eyes open you see something and and something catches your eye it catches your eye because it's exactly what you want and a few seconds later or one second later might be too late so I took the shot which might um, uh, account for its slight off horizontality but I didn't bother changing it I just took the shot when I saw it but in fact had that's back to the there's the original uh, then I took uh, these ones as she walked towards me but none of them worked as well if you look in this this one that was just after the one I took she's she's a bit less elegant a bit less enigmatic you can see here it's it's some woman with a, a heavy bag and she's ambling towards us with the arm out you know slightly penguin like uh, whereas this one is much more elegant with the legs the legs crossing uh, if you see, you compare those you see what I mean then the next one well I don't know she's looking at a holding a bag or something she's become too human and less a symbol of humanity if you see what I mean and she's also not well yeah she's okay she's placed okay but she's yeah like I said she's a bit too big there she's no that's another one that I took yeah there yeah, that's the and then this was the last one of that woman uh, she's <laughs> looks like she's about to blow her nose which isn't the most um, enigmatic mystical pose one could strike uh, so there it is um, what to do with man who has decided he can improve on nature by placing these these incredibly weird things and as photographers they're a dream because you can do all sorts of things with them you can you can take pictures of yourself being reflected in them which of course was part of the thing I did look uh, here's here's some others that I took just to show you there we are completely filling the frame with them uh, that's not particularly uh, art yeah that's yeah ah, there you go that's me and um, my client being reflected in a ball taking our pictures there's uh, there's another one and it's quite fun really it makes a nice uh, self portrait and if you get rid of the edges of it practically you just get this strange portrait of yourself which people have to try and work out why it's all uh, wibbly around the edges and why the buildings are going like this <laughs> if you don't tell them there's another one which could uh, serve that purpose well if you got rid of everything except this part here and made that the photo it could be quite intriguing there we are reflected again over there and uh, just another thing which could have been a theme um, there's a pigeon having a bath <laughs> in amongst the balls <laughs> so I didn't go for that if he'd been doing something spectacular he might have been the star but as it was that's the one I chose so another weird aspect of the Paris uh, the Paris phenomenon that's it for today thanks a lot for visiting see good quality pictures of this on the blog parissetmefree.blogspot.com and see you next time bye bye depuis que je suis à Paris le jour et la nuit je suis gris j'ai compris la douceur de vivre je suis fou de joie je suis ivre depuis que je suis à Paris